Hi everyone, I'm Tracy and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you guys all of my Hakuhodo mixed hair brushes. They look like this and um, they're often referred to like the salt and pepper brushes. So they're made of goat hair and squirrel hair. Hakuhodo doesn't dye their brushes anymore so you can see you know the natural color of all the hairs. Some companies uh, still do but that doesn't mean um, that they're any less of a brush and I'll show you a couple that I think are really great that are dyed and um, I have two brushes that are the same mix but from a different company so but I'm gonna focus on the Hakuhodo ones first I have these in a few different shapes I have the angled ones I have the paddle shaped ones I have the tapered ones and I have a fan one just one I just got it so um, I guess I'll save that for the end. Um, let's start out with the angled ones. And these are, oh, before we get started, these brushes that I'm gonna talk about are probably my favorite of my favorites. They don't leave my vanity. They always are available. For a while I was putting them away, but I would keep you know, taking them out. So there's not one brush of this type that I think is a dud or is not as good. They're all really, really amazing in their own way. So I'm gonna um, like give you guys close-ups, show you the differences and the sizes, and then give you guys what I recommend them be used for. Okay, so let me start off with the angled ones. And I'll start off with the smallest first. The smallest one of this shape is the G511. And initially I was I was really kind of taken aback by how small this brush is. It looks much bigger online. But um, I've been really, it took me like years to figure out what I like this brush for. And I actually use it for powdering this area and powdering the eyelids, especially recently because it's been so hot. I have been powdering a little bit more. Oh, and I'm, I look really pale because I'm gonna be using some of these for bronzer and blush and highlighter. So um, yeah, this is not my finished look. I forgot to say that. But um, I, I really, really like these angled ones. The very first Hakuhodo mix hair brush I got was this one, the B512. And this is the second to the smallest. And this is the brush that really allowed me to see just how special these brushes are. And okay, maybe with the next one, I'll, I'll show you guys like why I think, why these brushes are, you know, better. What, what sets these brushes apart from, from other ones like this? But um, this one is really good if you want a little bit more of a specific bronzer look. You can also use it for, um, for blush, but I pretty much use this for bronzer. And I noticed like I was picking this one up over all of my other bronzer brushes. And that kind of led me to get two more angled ones. And these are, I would say like top three favorite angled brushes. And this is the G5544. It's the one a, a bit a step bigger than the B512 that I just talked about. And I really, really like this for bronzer. You can also powder with it and you can do blush. You can do finishing powder, but I think bronzer is where this brush really shines. And I'm gonna use the next one to demo these brushes. I think this is the least dense of the ones that I'm talking about. And it's good for those of you who like an airier, fluffier brush for bronzer, which is what I like, because this, you can pretty much kind of load up the bronzer and just go to town. I've demoed this a few times, so I'm not going to demo it today, but it's very hard to overdo your bronzer with this brush but it's really good for someone that has maybe very fair skin and it's just trying to add a little bit of color or someone that tends to go a little bit overboard with their bronzer. This will apply things very lightly. You might have to build, but if that's something you wanna do, I think this one is the best for someone that wants a lightest, the, light, the lightest bronzer application that you can get. Okay, and the biggest or the, the I guess, yeah, the biggest of the angled ones I have is this G5542. And it's the 
same shape as the one I just spoke about, but this one is wider and it's denser. So yeah, it's it's bigger. I think lengthwise it's the same, but with this one, it has more surface space and it's bigger. So it's gonna apply a little bit more, but not in a heavy way. It's maybe a little bit faster because I feel like with this one, there's a little less building up of, uh, of pigment. And I'm gonna show it with the uh, Patrick Ta powder bronzer and this has become like my favorite powder bronzer recently it's really really great for my skin tone I have the shade she sculpted which is the medium shade I really like Patrick Ta um, powder products so I you know I kind of load it up if you want to put more on you can you don't have to worry about things getting too crazy and I just do this I kind of press down, you know, pretty firmly. I have a little bit of bronzer, cream bronzer underneath the foundation that I'm wearing. I'll do one side, this one, and then I'll do the other side with one of the other ones. See how fast that was? I I just went in with like one or two um, dips into the bronzer and I think it looks good. It's not too much, it's not too light. And I just really love the the way the, uh, the powder will lay down in a way that already looks blended without having to do a lot of blending. But if you wanted with this brush, you could, you know, blend away and I don't feel like it lifts your base makeup. I'll actually use the, I'll use the B512 on the other side, and this will give a little bit more of a concentrated application. It's not dense, it's just the, the hairs are shorter, so it's gonna create a little bit more definition. So if you're someone that likes to like contour more so with your bronzer, this one might be the best one for you. but none of these are going to provide a heavy application. This type of brush is for someone who wants to have that more like airbrushed, like gradual bronzer look. So see how it did that? Okay, I don't want to put too much on because I have a lot of other brushes that I want to show you guys. So I think, I, I think these are all amazing the one that i use the most is the g5544 so if you have similar makeup needs such as myself like you like bronzer but you don't want it to go on very strong i think this is probably the best if you want a more specific bronzer brush the b512 is probably more suitable for you or if you have like a smaller face i think this one will be be really good for you. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about the um, tapered ones that I have. And shoot, I have one more that I have to get. Okay, for the tapered brushes, I have three different sizes. I have the eye brush, which is the G5522. And so I lied, I don't leave them all on my vanity. I leave this one in storage because I just don't really use this one. But I know a lot of people like it. I was hoping this would be like my Wayne Goss 3, but it's just, it's just not. It's, um, it is a great brush, but yeah, this is the one that I leave in storage. Um, I really like the B5521, which is now the G5521, and um, this is really good for powdering, but it's also really nice for blush, and um, I'm not gonna demo it because I have other ones that I wanna demo for blush, but if you want like a very specific uh, blush application, this one is really good. You can just pat, but it's really good for powdering under the eyes. In fact, I'm gonna show you guys how I use this one to powder. It's good if you have like more mature skin because it's not going to lay down that powder very heavily and make your skin look older or drier. And that's what I like about this mix. 
it just lays down your powder products in a light way but not too light like sometimes the pure um, squirrel hair brushes I don't feel like provide enough of a strong application and I find myself spending a lot of time building but with these they're just like the perfect perfect in between between like a goat hair brush and a squirrel hair brush okay and then the largest one that I have in this shape is the G5530 and um, I would say yeah these two I use pretty regularly this this larger one is very very useful for powdering you can even do bronzer I'll show you how I use it for bronzer so because it's got the taper starts so low you have this whole surface space to apply bronzer especially in like this area and then the shape works really well like this and on the jawline so I tend to use this more for like setting powder or or um, finishing powder because the shape is really good for getting like into these little nooks and crannies of your face um, but it's also a really good blush and bronzer brush so yeah that's how I use this one so by the end of this video I'll be very bronzed I think this is good for a beginner as well because I feel like it's pretty easy to get your bronzer to look good with a brush like this okay so now the biggest category is going to be the paddle shape brushes and I have one two three four and I have a, a fan one I'll show I'll show you guys that at the end so paddle shape I have the G55 5545 I'll put them down below I'm pretty sure this is the G5545 and then I have the B507 which I think is now called the G507 I got this custom with the white handle and the medium um, length and then I have the B505 which I really like for setting powder I just haven't just I just haven't used this a whole lot and so that is shorter than the 507 it's it's actually the the denser bigger version of the g5545 so this one is actually I don't, i'm not sure where this one goes but i just recently got the most substantial uh, mixed hair brush that i have in my collection i think so far and that's the g502 so i haven't even used this one i'm probably gonna um give this some time before I use it on camera but so here these are the paddle shape brushes that I have the two that I use the most and that's probably because I've had these a little bit longer is the G5545 and the B507 I like both of these for blush I think these do blush best but the the G5545 because it's got such a taper it could also be used for highlighter the B507 I've really only used this for blush because it does blush so well I've demoed this a lot but I'm just gonna demo it again I'm gonna use this new Suku blush that I got I love, 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 love this brush it's really good for a pigmented blush or like just a very loosely packed brush because it applies things again so light and naturally so this is how I use this brush I just pat like that and it just so quickly will apply blush in a very you know already blended way there's no you can but you really don't have to blend after you use a brush like this so I use the G5545 the same way but because I've used this so much let me just see how the B505 does blush I don't think I've ever used this for blush but I'm sure it works great
Yeah, so it worked similarly to the B507, just I think it applied a little bit more, a little bit more of a heavier application. But yeah, these are some of the best blush brushes if you're beginning or if you, you know, aren't really into doing a lot of blending here, which is what I am. I have the most hyperpigmentation in this blush area, so if I could avoid, you know, doing this, then then I will. And so a brush like this really makes sense for me. Uh, this is also really nice with the Chantecaille Blur Powder because it picks up just the right amount. It's not too light, it's not too heavy, and the shape gets into this area really well, like under the eyes and in the middle of the face. So the B505 is an amazing brush, and um, I just haven't given it a lot of attention, but I think it's amazing. And I'll, I'll get back to you on the G502. This, de this brush is pretty dense, a little bit more dense than I thought. And, you know, I haven't washed this one. I just got it yesterday. But I just wanted to show you the like the exquisite craftsmanship that Hakuhodo puts into their brushes. And it's very, very evident with this type of brush. So um, the reason why you could pat and already have like a blended look is because if you see how soon it starts tapering, like so at the top, tip is right here, it starts tapering all the way down here and it tapers perfectly gradually so you can tell when you do this you know it doesn't like jump and all of a sudden become long it will just gradually taper and the sides are even tapered like that's how much thought is put into these brushes so it tapers from the long side and the short side and the hairs are coming out because this brush is, has not been used so if you're a little bit newer to Fude, when your brush is new, it's going to lose some hairs and you, you want that. You want to wash it and get those loose hairs out. So I just wanted to show you just how, how much thought is put into these brushes. And something else you want to consider is the mixing of the hairs and to get them to be evenly mixed is another step that the brush makers have to take. And I, I believe that's a pretty difficult thing to do. Um, I, I can't imagine exactly how they do it, but if you look at the hairs, they're evenly mixed. And I'm gonna show you a brush that is mixed, but in a different technique. So I just have one more of the Hakuhodo mixed hair brushes. And this is my first fan, like real fan brush. And I got the F, 7145 and I'm going to use this for eyeshadow or eyeliner and it's one of their smaller ones but not the smallest and they have this from like you know I think 11 millimeters I think this is 12 all the way up to like 40 something millimeter fan brush and they have this they're called the Oogi series which means fan and I generally don't use fan brushes but I was just very intrigued by by a Hakuhodo one and I decided to give one a try. I didn't use this yet, but I think maybe the next time I do my makeup, I'm going to try it for like the first lay down shade because it's the same exact length as this eye area. And if you want to like kind of create different definition around your brow, I think this will work really well. But let me try it to line. So I'm going to get this Dior, this darker shade. Only thing I'm worried is about a mess. I'm worried that this is going to, by doing this, it's going to get everywhere. But let's see. Wow, that, so that really, it kind of works like how I said the face brushes it already your your makeup will already look blended even after just like a few you know taps I feel like that's what happened here yeah it actually lined 
really nicely, really evenly. I already had a little shadow down here, but even like it kind of created like that natural wing shape, which is what I go for. And it's very, very gentle. So I think if you have sensitive eyes, you would probably like this. It's maybe not so much beginner friendly. If you're just starting out lining with shadow, I recommend a like a flat brush or a pencil shape. But yeah, I'm really, so far really impressed. And then maybe I can get the upper lash line. Yeah, and it, I can't even like feel it on my eyelid. Yeah, so I think that's probably what I'm gonna end up using this for to line the top and lower lash line and to create that like subtle wing, which is normally what I do. So yeah, so far I'm really, really glad I gave this a try. And I think and one of you guys told me that you feel the same. This type of brush is extremely addictive. I mean, every time I get one, I'm like, that's all I need. I have all of these that I need or want or could ever need. And I end up getting another one. I pretty much get one every time I order from Food Aid Japan, whether it's a little one or a bigger one. I just love these so much. And um, if you have these, you probably understand what I'm talking about. Something else I wanted to mention, I, I follow the exchange rate, especially against the Japanese yen. And today, if I'm not mis mistaken, the yen as, is at a record low against the dollar. It's now just about 140 yen to a dollar, which I've never heard of that. I don't think it's happened since like maybe the 90s or so. I mean, it's been some time. The last time I visited, it was 106 yen to a dollar and it often goes under a hundred. So there's been times where it's like 96 yen to a dollar. So 140 to a dollar, you're pretty much saving like 40% when you buy products in yen with a dollar. So I'm not trying to encourage you guys to go out and buy a bunch of these, but if you want to get one of these, it's the time to do it. Not just Hakuhodo, you know, with the other brands. If you buy through CD Japan, Fude Japan, Fude Beauty, you're going to see better pricing. Just in my personal experience of purchasing, CD Japan seems to have the lowest price when it comes to the exchange. Then Fude Japan and Fude Beauty are usually about the same. I'm not trying to say, like, go buy, buy everything you want, but... I can't imagine the yen getting any weaker. I don't know. I can't predict the economy, but you know, it is a good time. It's good and bad for someone like me that loves buying these brushes. Okay, I want to just go over two more that are also these same mix, but from a different brand. And that is the Koyuto Premium Series. Now, I know these are hard to come by. They uh, are no longer available on a lot of the retailers. Uh, I got this before it went discontinued. This is the P4, and this is one of my all-time favorite brushes. If you can get this, I would get it. It's just, it's just amazing at doing eyeshadow, doing um, laying down shimmer, creating definition, and Fude Japan. I don't know if it's still there, but they had the other premium series brushes and I got the cheek brush. The only thing to me is the, the handles are very short. The handles are very basic, but the hairs and the craftsmanship of the hairs are very unique and they're, they're done just so beautifully. And these perform differently from these and I'll show you why. So if you look really closely, you'll notice that the, the ends are dark so the squirrel hairs are black, right? So what they're doing is they're making the squirrel hairs very slightly longer. I mean, I'm talking about 
a millimeter. I can see it. I don't think it's translating on camera, but they make sure these squirrel hairs are like a, a tad bit longer than the goat hairs. I'm not sure how they do that, but they also tend, so the, the goat hairs, the white hairs, they tend to be more around and more inside the brush because the goat hairs are firmer. So you're getting the support and the firmness of the goat hairs, but the soft silkiness of the squirrel hair. Like when you touch it like this, it, it feels like a pure squirrel hair brush. It's so soft and silky. And I'm gonna use this brush in, on camera so because I'm so excited for it. But um, I think these are just as good as the Hakuhodo, if not better, but they're hard to come by. And um, they also cost more now, but um, if you buy it like today, it's actually not so bad because of the exchange rate. But uh, I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna show it with this Suku blush, which is very bronzer-like. It's got this brown shade, so, cause I can use a little bit more bronzing i'm going to kind of use it on the perimeter of my face just to see how this performs so it picks up a pretty decent amount with just a little bit of pressure so i don't think i bronzed as much on this side so i was really really excited to get this one because i've i haven't used a premium series face brush so yeah this one performs really really beautifully I mean it just so gradually will apply the pigment and I think it would be hard to overdo any kind of powder product with this and um, I think the bronzer and blush would be the best use for this because it's pretty much domed. It is slightly pinched, but just ever so slightly. So it doesn't have as much of a taper like the Hakuhodo one. See like this one, it starts tapering right there. So it's a little bit longer here versus the Hakuhodo, it starts tapering really low. But these are unique. I don't see this type of brush anywhere else. If anyone does know of another brand or another brush that is crafted like this, please let me know. I will probably buy it. But um, I, yeah, I haven't seen this technique of brush making anywhere else. So these are very, very special. They have the powder one, which is very, very expensive right now. But um, this one was, was fair. I think this was 90 which is what I was like willing to pay. But um, you know, when the exchange rate changes, these will probably be like way too expensive for me to consider buying. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that before you leave and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy this content. So I'll see you all next time. Bye.